Welcome to the rendering module. Rendering is a process of generating an image by combining geometry information, camera, texture, lighting, and material information using a computer program. Before an image can be rendered, appearance materials are applied to the various parts of your design to visualize how your design would look in the real world. Materials contain the visual properties of plastic, glass, metal, paint, and wood, and pretty much anything else you can think of to create photorealistic images. In this section, you're going to learn how to apply materials and how to edit materials. To start, I'm going to open up my data panel and I'm going to double click on the utility knife data set that we'll be using for this module and I'm going to close the data panel. So here we have our utility knife, which we're going to render out and apply materials to. So first of all, I'm going to switch from my modeling workspace to my rendering workspace. And you can see once I do that, that the background changes. We're now in more of a photo booth kind of environment. I don't have the grid lines on the, on the ground anymore. And I've switched into a shaded mode of my model. In the render toolbox set, I have uh, a setup area that contains the appearance materials, library, the environment, and the ability to apply decals. And we have a render section which allows you to enable the ray tracing renderer as well as capture an image. So to start, I'm going to go into my appearance materials. So materials are the um, things that you assign to your surfaces in order to make them look photoreal. And we have two types of uh, materials in Fusion 360. We have uh, physical materials. So if I go down here in my drop down, I have physical materials, which are the, uh, what has physically this object would be made out of. And then we have appearance materials, which are you can think of as what you would apply over top. So you think of physical of this could be a metal body here for this blade for this uh, housing and then the appearance material would be the paint that's applied over top. That's an easier way to think about it. We generally work in appearance materials when we're doing rendering. So I'm going to go in here and here is right now is our appearance library. In, in the appearance dialog box, you have the ability to change where you're applying your materials to, the component bodies or the faces. The in this design section is what has been applied to your model currently, and right now it's all physical materials. The library is the actual materials that we supply. So here are a subsection of categorized materials. So you have glass, under glass you have different choices for glass, and then under each when you actually have the swatches and the names of the actual material. So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under plastic, opaque, and I'm going to look for the plastic glossy yellow. And I'm going to just drag that right onto the body of my model. So you can see that assigns onto the model. The uh, plastic glossy moves from the library, makes a copy into this design. And you can see it's just been assigned to that one body that I selected. And I can do the same thing to the other side so that we have the consistent material on both sides of the body. And you'll also notice it doesn't add another plastic glossy yellow because that's the default shader. It's been assigned to both places and it basically links that material so that if I made changes to one, all of the objects that had that material assigned to them would uh, change also. Next I'm going to do is I'm going to assign another material in a little bit different fashion. I'm going to go into uh, other and I'm going to grab rubber hard and I'm going to drag it onto grip 1.1 component. So m remember I mentioned here before that the bodies and components is selected so I can assign them to individual bodies or components. Now because grip 1 is a component level and it really only has one body in it which is this back grip everything underneath that component gets assigned. If I had multiple bodies under a component, I wanted to set individual materials for them, I'd open up the component and I'd assign them at the body level for each one. Now I'm going to assign materials using the typical drag and drop method. I'm going to go into plastic, textured, polka. So here we have a number of different uh, plastic materials that have texture maps assigned to them already. And this one's a polka dot pattern. So if you see, if I drop it on here, it looks like the surfaces are raised. This is using what's called a bump map. And the bump map is simply an image that's used to derive what looks like uh, deviation in the surface or areas that rise and areas that fall. 
but uh, in fact if you look at it from the side it really is smooth so it's just a, an eye trick that we use to uh, give the impression that there is uh, more to the surface than there is. And the reason we do that is it's because it's a lot easier to render out instead of having to uh, individually punch all these holes into that surface. Now you could do that, that's an option, but this is a quick way of giving that impression without having to do it. I'm also going to close this and assign plastic opaque and I'm going to go down to matte blue and assign that to the cradle. So the blade cradle now has the blue attached. And then the last material to assign is I'm going to close this, close plastic, go into metal, go into stainless, and drag down till I get to the satin, and I'm going to assign that to the blade itself. So now we have all the base materials assigned. And what I want to show you next is a quick way of swapping out materials if you change your mind about materials or want to try a different look. I'm going to close all these out. I want to change this to the red instead of the yellow. I could just go in and change it, but I'll show you a method for doing a quick change. If you have multiple items that have the same material assigned to them, I can go into plastic, opaque, red, and I'm just going to drag and drop it on top of the existing yellow one that was there. And you can see what happens is all of the, um, well, the two sides of this body, in this case, that had the yellow assigned to it now have the red assigned. So that now uh, is basically all my base materials assigned. And now I'm going to go in and edit the materials so that they look the way I want them to look. So to do that, I'm going to first double click on glossy red. And that opens up this small dialog box for editing. And it has an area where I can change the name of the actual shader. The, uh, I can change the base color. So I can drag across and change the base color. I can uh, drag in here to change the tint so I can make it a very dark or light color or I can go for, from white to black so I have a number of different choices. These numbers that are updating as I'm dragging are the RGB values and if I know the red, blue, green value numbers for the material for the color I can just enter them in. I don't have to use this. Scale and rotation will cover in a minute and then advanced is opens up advanced options and I'll show you those in a minute too. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to an orange color. And I can do that a number of ways. I can, I can find sort of the base color I'm looking for and then drag it and I want something a little darker than that. However, in this case, in the uh, documentation, we've provided you with the actual number value, which is 240 for R and the G value is 114. And the blue value is four. And there we go. So now we've changed the color of this. You can see that that updates in here. And the one thing I forgot to do is actually change the name of this to orange. And I say done. And you can see now that it's plastic, glossy, plastic, glossy orange. So there we go. That's been changed. The next thing I'm going to do is um, look at the polka dot texture here in grip one because it, it's not the color I want and I'm going to do some changes to the actual texture. So I'm going to go open up texture here and I'm going to change the name of it from plastic texture polka to blue because I'm going to change this color to blue. First of all, I want it to match the color of this one. So uh, in order to do that, I know that this, uh, what the RGB value is for this blue, and I'm just going to type in the same value here. So 48, 59, and 150. So there we go. So we have a, a matching color to that one. And the other thing I'm going to do is this is the area now where you can use scale and rotation. So scale and rotation changes the texture map that has been placed on this. Now in this case, this is a bump map. And what a, as I mentioned before, a bump map is all it's doing is projecting this image down onto the surface. And you can change the way that that has uh, orientated on the surface a couple ways. One of them is you can just change the scale. So if you're changing the scale of the actual picture that's being used to, to make this, I can make them really big or I can make them really small. Um, it really depends on what you're looking for as far as the artistic style or the type of the size of the um, texture that's going to be applied. Uh, and I can rotate it. So the rotation allows me to change the rotation value. 
I'm just going to leave it here for now. Now the other thing you can do is change the way that the projection is being done on the surface. Now a projection map is simply a map uh, picture in this case has been assigned to a, a piece of geometry that is encircling this. You can't really see it but that's if you can imagine that's what it is and there's a number of different ways of doing those types of projections. I'm going to close this here and close the appearance window and I'm going to go down into the grip two bodies and I'm going to right click on here and there's an option that says texture map controls and what this controls is the projection type that's being used on that particular projection map and I'm going to move in here a little and see you can see what the difference is so the projection type that came up by default is box there is an automatic projection type which will try to to its best degree uh, figure out how it should be applied based on the surface um, and you can see there's a number of different choices so planar puts this picture in one plane and it pushes it down through and this um, widget that comes up allows you to select what direction you want that plane to be on so basically on this face pushing this way and you can see how along here it's intersecting but it gets dragged as it goes above and the curvature changes on that surface if I go from the top the top looks starts to look really good but the sides start to drag down because it's not a perfectly flat surface and same thing if I go from the front it's horrible so I don't think t uh, the planar map is what I want. A spherical map is basically a ball, a sphere, that has this map, which is a square map assigned to it. And because of that, it pinches at the top and the bottom like a real sphere jump piece of geometry. And this tool then changes the location of that point. Um, doesn't really help us in this case, so we're going to move on. The cylinder is exactly the same thing now, so it's a cylinder. Um, and the top uh, cap and bottom and then there's a, a cylindrical body that gets this map applied to it and it's still not doing a great job. So I think what we're looking for really here is the box which is a cube, six-sided planes and it gets projected in all directions and you can see the result is we still see a little bit of a line here and you can do a number of things to change that. Um, I can close this go back into my actual appearance appearance uh, window and I can change if I bump down the scale a little bit it starts to become difficult to see that transition um, I can do the change the rotation and do a number of different things but just for the sake of what we're doing here and to stay true to the um, I think we had 15 here in the documentation so 50 okay now if I go down into the advanced options, you'll actually see, so the advanced options are a larger set of material editors. I can change the color here, the name here. The reflectance and the roughness, uh, this is how uh, light is going to bounce off this surface onto other surfaces, and the roughness is uh, imperfections in the surface. So a surface like this, this is highly glossy, will have almost no roughness. If, you, if I slide this down to almost zero, it becomes almost like a glass surface, highly reflective. If I drag it over to the other end, it's going to be um, very rough and it will have no reflection to it all. Down in here, you can see that we have this relief bump map and here's the actual map that's being used. So you can see that it's a polka dot map and it's black with white dots and that's how you get this relief in here. Okay, so I'll just give you an idea of what you the level of detail that you can go into when you're editing your surfaces. So this rubber also has a texture map assigned to it, but it's a different kind of texture map. So if we go rubber hard and go into advanced, what this one has a map that's applied to the highlight control. So it doesn't change the actual base color. The base color is still black. Um, but when light hits it, it uses this map to diffuse the light, and that's why you get this look here as you can see the the highlight changes from being a clear highlight to this rougher highlight and you can it gives you the impression that surface has a little bit of a different uh, texture to it so again just different ways of describing the surfaces to give you an idea when you look at that you know instinctively that that's a rubber surface and it's probably a hard rubber surface okay so i have that set up now um, and i'm happy with the projection map what I'm going to do next is I'm going to duplicate a material and I'm going to assign a, a material to the face. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the blade and because the blade is sort of half into this body, I'm going to actually go into the blade, 
I'll close this window first. Go into the blade body. And oh, I can only do it at the component level. I'm going to say isolate at the component level. And what isolate does is basically turns everything else off, uh, visible. And then um, I'm left with just this piece of geometry. So here is here's the blade. I'm going to go back into my appearance window. I'm going to find my satin. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to duplicate the satin material. So I have two versions of satin now. And I'm going to go into faces and I'm going to double click on this new copy. I'm going to darken it down quite a bit. So what I've done now is I've got the, everything has the exact same settings as the satin steel, but the color is different. So the color is a little different. And I'm going to drag that over to the face side of here. And what you can see that it has done is just that face has that material assigned. It's still reflective. So it's not uh, exactly just a, a matte black. It's based on the, the satin steel, but on that face, I've created a black version of it. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And it just gives the impression that there might have been something applied to the painted on this side of the blade that a logo might go on or something. But it just gives you a little bit more uh, depth to that uh, surface. So I've duplicated it. I assigned it to just the face. It doesn't affect the whole body. And it's all applied. And I'm going to go back, make, change this back to body and then close this and then unisolate it. I have to close this window first. Close that window and unisolate this. And there we go. So now we've applied all of your base materials and we've done some editing. And next we are going to apply a decal to the body and we are also gonna change the environments. And we'll cover that in the next section. Hope to see you there.